All right. Today we're going to look at doing the rebuild on this uh, Carter mechanical fuel pump. And uh, sorry, it had already taken it loose before I broke the camera out, but uh, goes back together in the opposite of what I took it apart. So I figured you'd be able to see that. So uh, before we get started, I want to say the trickiest thing was course I was trying to pull this plunger out this uh, this was what my issue was I think it had sat so long and uh, when I actually started to use fuel in it what was happening I don't know if you can see that but the rubber was basically degraded and um, there's a tiny weep hole here which came out here so what I noticed was fuel was dropping out of this hole here onto my fan belts and uh, yeah that's what was happening the fuel is supposed to stay on top of here of course when it starts to get a hole that fuel drops down in the bowl and weeps out lets you know hey it's probably about time to replace this so got a rebuild kit it consisted of a new I guess this is a big flap here's the smaller one new gasket and actually one of the things I was worried about the most this little dowel holder yeah here is the uh, the kit I ordered it's a Carter it's the model number and everything hopefully you can see that but why, why I was worried about this because this is how I it looked when I took it out I actually uh, dremeled down into it and put a screwdriver to be able to turn it and once I did that it was able to pop out but what happens is this rod is in this hole and this is here so it was a little tough to go at, come out but I'll show you how I put it back in and how I got it out and maybe some tricks to get that out a little easier but anyway so let's look at putting this back together okay so this is your little mechanical foot lever okay goes right in this section here if you look inside there's a little notch or nipple in there the spring goes right on top of that like that all right let's see if we can get this in here all right now you can see it's connected it's a notch down there and there's one up there and that's what it looks like on the inside now the thing is what I'm going to recommend is going ahead and putting this in first because this little claw has to grapple right underneath there like that so you're definitely going to want to put that in first and I just put the screws and bolts here just for safekeeping so I wouldn't lose them Now you probably want to try to line those holes up as much as possible. I don't know if you can see that. Try to get a little bit more light. Right inside there. I'll have to try to line this up. And get it to pinch all 
Now to get this spring back loaded. Of course, always be careful when working with springs because they will pop out and fly across the room. So when I was taking this loose, what I was trying to do, I kept trying to pull this thing out. And I'm like, why is this not coming out? Well, this rod actually goes through here and holds this in. Of course, I just pulled the string. Let's bring it out. Let's try to get this rod in first. Alright, now you can see the rod through the gauge maybe. I've got my big lights so and you can see a little bit better. You can see the rod in there. And now this is that part that I told you was in there and you can see where I dremeled it down to be able to get it out. So they sent a new one in the kit though, so that's nice. Make sure my spring is going to go on good before I tap that all the way down. That thing is was a little tricky to get out. All right. I slowed it back in, looking good. Let's lock down, so we'll go ahead and tap this in. I think the reason it's two separate pieces because that still allows this to move up and down with the engine and not unscrew it or pop this out. So I'm glad they sent a new one of these though. Really glad because I was worried about where to find it. Alright, so that's it for that. Now we had the top section. And uh, this thing was real crusty when I pulled it off. I think I may have torn this when I actually pulled it off. So, And I, I went ahead and cleaned the surfaces already and all that good jazz. So you just really line this up. And you can see there's two holes, screw holes there. So just line it up with those two you see if I put it on backwards it doesn't really line up so it's kinda off the way it's sitting so Now what I did notice, before I bolt this down, I'm hoping it doesn't make a big difference. Um, if you look at these, actually I have an extra hole here. So I'm hoping that doesn't make too much of a difference. So we'll see when I get it on the car. So cross your fingers there. And the top has two holes or screw holes. So this should line up here.
course you got to play around with it a little bit to be able to get it to screw in. Then we'll just marry these two pieces up. Just make sure you line the holes up. Now, as you can see, these this can go just about any way. Okay. But what I remembered or made sure I marked before I uh, took this apart was this is the engine side. So, this is the input for the gas, this is the return line, and this is going out to the carburetor. So, this should be lined up about like that. About like that. So, of course, line the holes back up. Now you want to make sure that, um, as you can see, these are just regular Phillips. And these had a nut on top. So these three that had the nut on top was for the heat shield. So you got to make sure you put those on this back side over here. start it before I start cinching them down too hard.
I try to type these on my kind of go in a star pattern like a little nuts to try to get equal pressure. off Let's go a little bit faster Toughest one, this is kind of like a weird position this one's in. Alright, but that's it. That's it, put it back together. Like I said, the main thing to remember is taking this stopper off and then, of course, making sure the things line back up the way it's supposed to go. But uh, I'll put this back in the engine. Hopefully it's not leaking anywhere else and hope this helps somebody.